All right, today we're doing 13.2. This was also due on Monday. So we are using the square root method. So what do I need to do to solve this? I just showed you in the last one. Ansana? Subtract 9 from both sides. No. Oh. Square root method. Yes. Square root both sides. Root both sides. Okay, and so now I'm left with, when I take the square root of x, what do we get? The absolute value of x. You must write this, and that equals 3. Then how do I lose the absolute value? Making it plus or minus 3. X equals plus or minus 3. You guys remembering this? Okay, questions? No. All right, so we are, there are two solutions. So what would I do here? What am I doing? One more time. Lucas, Malou. You will do, um, you will do rad x squared, rad equals rad 36, and then you will get x plus 36. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you get absolute value of x equals 6. Okay, I'd like you guys to do number two. Pause the recording and do number two. Thank you. What are we doing, Andy? We're going to root both sides. Don't be rude, just root it. Like Mr. Gilliam taught me once upon a time. Okay, and then what do we get? And then you get the absolute value of n equals 13. Good. Excellent. All right, next one. Ready? Um, so when I have, I take the square root. Square root, I root both sides. And then I get what? The absolute value of y equals rad 7. Please, if they do not say estimate, do not estimate. When is the best time to estimate if they don't mention it? Word problems, application problems. But when you're doing the math kind of problems, you leave it in the radical because it's far more accurate. So when I'm here and then I'm left with y is equal to, yes? Plus or minus rad 7. Plus or minus rad 7. All right, try number four. Okay, what are we doing? You add 6 to both sides. Plus 6, plus 6. Then the m squared equals 13. And then you group m squared and 13, and then you get the absolute value of m equals rad 13. And then to make that m on its own, you make it m equals positive. Plus or minus 13. Okay, questions? Excellent, moving on. Okay, so now as they get bigger, what am I doing? How about Chris? Um, we can Step one. Add two to both sides. Okay, we are doing the square root method. That does not get the y alone. My goal here is to get the y alone. Are you in this class right now? Thank you. So what do I need to do to get the y alone? Uh, you can add 20 on both sides. Adding 20, thank you. Okay, add 20 to both sides, then you can divide, three on both sides. divide by 3. Next step, and we root both sides. Absolute value of y equals 4, and then excellent. Okay, you guys try the next one. Go. Pause the recording. Try the next one. Yes, Justin. So you would, um, for, for number six, you would add 
16. Add 16. So as we are using the square root method, we get x squared alone. If we use zero product property, we move everything to the side of the x squared. So today we're going to add 16. Keep going. And it's 2x squared is equal to 40, so you divide 2. I mean, Next, we're going to divide 2. And then, and then you do um, square root both sides, but then um, it, its absolute value x is, is equal to um, 10, and then you do x rad, is equal to plus rad 10. 10. Rad, rad 10, and then x is equal to plus or minus rad 10. Plus or minus rad 10. Good. Questions? All right, moving on. All right, next two, why don't you guys finish these? Pause the recording, and you guys try the next two. All right, so number seven, you should have added 30. Subtract 30, sorry, divide both sides by two. Now what do we get? Okay, what's the next step? Yep. You root both sides, so you get red, or, uh, well, yeah. Because it's Why? So if I'm recording, yes, I am. Okay, so if I root both sides, if I root both sides, I then am left with the absolute value of y is equal to the square root of negative 7, and we can't do that, so we say no solution. No real root, right. No, it would be no real solution. Right, you can write no, no real solution. Shh. All right, next one. What are we doing? Shh. Sarkis. Um, so you add two to both sides. Add two to both sides. You get 5x squared is equal to 3. Next. You divide each side by 5. Good. And then you get x, x squared is equal to 3 over 5. x squared equals 3 over 5. And then? And then you do the rad of each side. Root both sides. And then you get x is equal to 2. No, we don't get x is equal to. We get... What do I do next for the x? Oh, you rationalize? No. What do I get when I take the square root of x squared? No, we don't get x. We get the absolute value of x equals radical 3 over radical 5. And then we have to rationalize. Keep going. Rad 5 over rad 5, and then we are left with? And then we are left with um, rad 15 over 5. X, e X equals? Plus rad 15 over 5. Okay, X equals plus or minus radical 15 over 5. Questions? Okay, um, I'm going to, why don't you guys try this one? We've done this. I think we gave this to you on the quiz, so pause the recording and... You guys work on nine. Hey, Ethan, in the back, what are we going to do first? We're going to root both sides. Keep going. No, we don't get y plus 1. We get absolute value of y plus 1 equals 4. Then, before that, to lose the absolute value, what do I have to do to the other side? Plus and minus 4. So I'm going to say y plus 1 equals plus or minus 4. Now we subtract 1 from both sides, so it's negative 1 plus or minus 4. So if I do negative 1 plus 4, <coughs> what do I get? We get 3, and I have negative 1 minus 4. So we get 3 and negative 5. Questions? Okay. Pause the recording. Finish number 10. Okay, let's check the work. We're going to root both sides. We get the absolute value of x minus 3 equals 5. To lose the absolute value, I set it plus or minus 5. I add 3 to both sides. So we get 3 plus 5 is 8. And 3 minus 5 is 3, is negative 2. Questions? Okay, questions? Oh, yeah. Ooh, let me fix that. All right, so I all of a sudden switched to a Y. Not quite sure. Pause the recording. Okay, we are talking about the height of a falling object. So, this 
um, equation does change based on metric system, non-metric system, here, France, you know, I've seen it in a, a variety of different ways. So if we look at H, it stands for height in meters in space, and when it says in meters, um, and it says in space, it means where is it, H is like your ending height. Does that make sense? An ending height. Um, where T is seconds, and C is the starting height. So if I'm standing on something, let's say I'm on a building, and I drop something. Yes. I do it, but we don't have any spare chairs around. Miss Sophia was actually the endangered Sophia today. So if I'm standing on a building and I drop something, this is what we call initial drop height, and that is our ending drop height, right? Um, so we would imply the ending drop height right here. Does that make sense? Okay. So, by the way, what is that height when it hits the ground? Zero. Okay. So we're setting ourselves up for it. So if a penny is dropped from on top of a building. I don't know, Miss Sophia, really. I, I don't think I can do that. Stand on a chair dropped from on top of the Empire State Building, which is 448 meters tall, how long will it take to hit the ground? So tell me, what is the initial height? What is the initial height? Uh, Gavin? 448. 448. Where would that be substituted? Where is the, we, we, let's go back. H represents what? The ending height. Okay, the result. But the initial, the starting, so where am I substituting the 448? C. Okay, and H, when it hits the ground, the ending height is at zero. So we just substitute. And then what do you think we do? Yes. Subtract 448 from both sides. Okay. And now we're left with negative 5t squared. What do I do next? Yep. Divide by negative 5. And in this case, am I going to estimate or am I going to um, reduce the radical? Yes, Chris. You have to estimate because it's real life Right, you have to estimate because it's real life application. So when I do the division, it's about 89.6, so I root both sides. The square root of 89 is a little more than what? Nine, Let's estimate it. Nine. Nine point what? Uh, it, nine point, it's oh. eight units away, and the other one, so it's maybe 9.4, 9.3. 9.5. I would go with 9.4. Yeah. Um, what would C be equal to again in general? Not, I know it's 448 here, but in general. It's the starting height. Initial height. Does that make sense? Yes. But isn't there like swim resistance as well? Well, we're not counting that. It's, it's this, not this counting this. This, this is a closed system where uh, nothing can affect it. It's, it's, in, a, it's, a it's in a vacuum, yeah. That's the closest system. There's no gravity. There's no gravity. Well, there is gravity. That's that's the only variable we're accounting for. There's no drag resistance, wind, or anything else, or pressure, or or the gradient of the. There's nothing. We repeat it for the recording. Loud. Go on. Uh, no. Just repeat what you said. Why? <laughs> I'm too shy. Okay. So hopefully you heard that. This is a closed system. We're only. Shh. We're only taking into account, it's a closed system, we're only taking into account the, the items that are presented. All right, whoops. All right, so let's try the next one. Vertical motion, okay? If you notice, um, H is still our object in space or our ending, play, or our ending height. Um, C is still our initial height, right? But now we've got the velocity because we're throwing upward. 
Um, so I'm starting at a certain point and I'm throwing it upward. Questions there? So the starting velocity, when you throw it up, right? It's the starting velocity because you're throwing it up. It's obviously not going to be at that speed the whole time um, or that force. How long will a ball thrown upwards at 10 meters per second stay in the air if it's thrown at, from a 40-meter cliff? So let's go through... What was the equation? I want to go back to the equation. So negative 5t squared plus the velocity times time plus c. Negative 5t squared. Okay. Okay. So if we are negative h, h is equal to negative 5t squared. What did we say? Plus the velocity t plus c. Okay, where am I substituting and what are the different variables? What does the 10 meters per second represent? The velocity. That's my velocity. Good. So I'm going to substitute the, the 10 meters per second is the velocity. And what does the 40 represent? This is the initial height. Okay. And what is the h? Um, what would the H represent? Why? I'm seeing him make a little... Well, why? Why? Yeah. What does it represent? Zero. Zero. Because in the air, it's not in the ground, right? So H is our zero, so we're substituting. Zero. Now I can put it in. Zero equals 10T... Zero, zero equals negative 5t squared plus 10t plus 40. What would we do next? How about Ellen? Um, we, we would make sure that the velocity is equal to the Right. Oh, so first you would, so you would, uh, so you would do the negative 5, you would, uh, you would multiply it with 40. So Before that, you forgot your first rule of factoring. Oliver. Divide either a negative 5 or take out or factor the negative 5. Good. I'm going to just divide it out because it doesn't help me to just keep it there. It makes everything much smaller. Now what? Now what? Somebody? Boeing? Factor. Factor. What multiplies to negative 8 and adds to negative 2? Negative 4. Okay. So x plus 2 or t plus 2. So I'm doing t plus 2, and t what? Minus 4. And so what are my solutions? t is equal to negative 2, and t is equal to, what is it? Come on, guys. 4. So what is the best solution? Yes. 4, because it can't be, there can be negative 4. Time. So the answer would be 4. Uh, and it's saying how long, so it would be four seconds. Are there any questions? Okay. Okay, next one, go. You guys try the next one on your own. Pause the recording. All right, let's check our work. So we're using the same equation, right? This time my initial height is eight, my velocity is six, and I'm given a fun little quadratic like such. So what do we have to do? Anybody? Chris? Factor or divide by negative five. We can't divide by negative 5. It doesn't factor out of all three terms. This is what we call lead coefficient factoring. So what do I need to do, Ansana? Right. Remember, we're multiplying negative 5 by that. We get t squared plus 6t minus 40. And what do I get? What multiplies to negative 40 and adds to 6? Yes. 10, negative 4. So I'm doing t 
plus 10 times t minus 4. <coughs> and then we have to do what? Yep, keep going, on Sana. Divide by 5, divide by 5, and we end up with t plus, t, t plus 2 times 5t minus 4 equals 0. And then we set them both equal to 0. t plus 2 equals 0. So t equals negative 2. And then 5t minus 4 equals 0. I'm adding 4. 5t equals 4. Divide by 5. Divide by 5. T is... What did I do? Okay, so go back. I, I end up with T minus 2. Shh. So if I'm dividing by negative 2, it's T minus 2. And so I say T is equal to 2. And then um, it's here. Wait, negative 5. It's negative 5T. And then that becomes a plus. Sorry. Okay, so now we are... Um, I subtract 4. Uh, minus 4, minus 4. Negative 5t equals negative 4. Divide by negative 5. Divide by negative 5. t is equal to what? 0 point... Uh, Eight. What does that mean? Zero point eight or four fifths. What does that mean? <coughs> oh, and wait a second. I'm getting something different because this should have been a plus. Sorry, this should have been a plus. That means no. That's right. Minus four. I got that it ended up as a negative. And it should be 5. What am I doing wrong here? It's supposed to be negative 5t minus 4 equals 0. Negative. And it would be t minus 2, not t plus I think you just divide out the negative 1 in the beginning. Oh, yeah. That would be best. If we, if we just divided out the negative. Yeah. But how do I fix it from here? So here... I'm dividing by negative 5. It makes it negative. I really move this over here, and this is a minus. Okay? There we go. So it's negative 5t minus 4, right? Because I'm using the minus as the lead. So here I add. Here I add. Now that's how it becomes negative. That's why this is not correct. So the answer is, how long will it stay in the air? For two seconds. Two seconds. Um, Boeing's right. If you had just divided out the negative one in the beginning, it would have gotten rid of all the negative nonsense. So I would suggest you do that. All right, let's go to some um, compound interest. This is the dangerous kind of debt. Annual compound interest. So the formula is um, A equals the P times the quantity of 1 plus R to the T power. So A is the total amount in the account. P is the principal, the starting amount. Now that's either the amount you borrow or the amount that you, um, either money that you borrow or money that you loan, loan right. And then R stands for our interest rate, and T is for time number of years. So I'm using the formula. If 500 is invested for two years, the interest is compounded annually. That means it's, it's, it's calculated every year. So what interest rate is needed to increase the total in the account to 540? So where am I, what am I substituting? What's unknown? Yeah. The R. The R. So I'm substituting the two where? Uh, in the T. In the T. 500 where? In the P. P. And 540 where? A. A. That was the total amount. 
So now I'm dividing by 500 on both sides. Then we're left with, I can reduce it to right away, divide by 10, right? Then we can divide both by 2, and I get uh, 50, I mean 25, 27, right? Or to over 25. Now what do we do? What would I do next? Yep. Root both sides. Square root of r plus 1 squared. And we're going to end up with the absolute value of r plus 1 is equal to rad 27 over rad 25. Rad 25 simplifies to 5. Okay. Now, reduce the top radical. Okay. The top radical is made up of what? 9 and 3, right? 9 times 3. So what does that reduce to? 3 rad 3. And I've got 5 on the bottom. To lose the absolute value, I need to make it plus or minus. And I'm left with r plus 1. You guys understanding that? Okay, now we are. Um, I subtract 1. And now we have negative 1 plus or minus r plus 3. R, 3 rad 3 over 5. You can... Hold on. You really should be estimating this. It's a real-world application, so you have to figure out the square root of rad 3. That is, uh, does anybody know what that is? 1.7 square root of 3? About 1.7 times 3. You'll get about 1.04 if you divide it by 5. And you should be using, excuse me, 732. Do the math with your calculator. This you're not doing by hand. You're definitely using your graphing calculator and simplify it down to two numbers. Okay? Two. I get one plus 1.04. One minus. And so obviously the negative isn't going to work if I, I'm not going to have a negative interest rate. So it would be the interest rate is about 4%. Pause the recording. Oh, nope, that was it.